Well, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and thank you very much for that introduction, Phil. Uh, it set, sets the day, and it's great to see a good turnout um, to explain the work that's being done and supported by the levy. It's doing its job. Um, so thank you for coming. As you know, tree growing is getting unprecedented attention uh, within the community right now. It's a major political issue. Uh, and that's the first time for as long as I've been growing trees, which is nearly 50 years. Um, but right now, the attention is on trees because of a natural process. Photosynthesis absorbs carbon. Trees are the answer to New Zealand's carbon emissions problem. As long as we plant fast-growing trees, and uh, try and meet that target of 2050. And after the apocalyptic report that everybody would have heard about on Tuesday from the UN Climate Change Group, uh, we've got to move fast, and trees are the answer. Um, so uh, that's something we can sort of have in the back of our minds as we look at how we make tree growing more effective, uh, more efficient, uh, and more rewarding. The um, attention to forestry was not apparent about 10 years ago, uh, and there was a lot of grizzling from uh, government agencies and others who were supporting and asked to support forestry, uh, and they persuaded forestry leaders that the industry needed to make contributions to um, uh, the input into forestry for research, biosecurity, and general support. And this meant introducing a system beyond the voluntary contributions that were made largely by the larger forest, corporate forest growers. And that's when the concept of a commodity levy uh, was advanced and uh, there was a lot of work done uh, with MPI, who were the official group uh, associated with the um, uh, promotion at that time, uh, NMB, uh, and after considerable promotional effort, uh, a referendum uh, was generally regarded as a good idea, and an establishment committee was put together involving both Forest Owners Association and New Zealand Farm Forestry, and uh, they put a designed a referendum, a constitution, and put it to the growers. And that set out the constitutional shape of the levy, which is what we've got now, and a summary of how the money would be spent. In other words, a budget was uh, provided. Happily, the referendum was supported by about 84% in both number uh, of growers and in volume of those growing. Uh, and uh, with that endorsement, the organisation of what we have now uh, was put together and the forest growers were able to assert that they would pull their weight in terms of contribution to what was spent on forestry. The feature, of course, of the forest industry uh, raising money for itself was the ability it gave to leverage uh, the money from the government. Uh, and an early example, you'll all remember, um, it didn't seem so long ago now, that we had that horrific year of health and safety figures, deaths in forests, um, from that time, and we were pretty much in the forefront of putting together the Forest Industry Safety Council, FISC, um, with large initial funding, which we continue, uh, and that's been met by a large fund uh, from ACC, uh, and uh, a vigorous council now operates uh, with forestry and government backing. So that is a, is a good example. The trust board is representative uh, 
of forest growers. So there are four, there they are. Uh, there's the rogues gallery. Um, four uh, representing the large, largely corporate forest growers and two representing the uh, smaller growers, that's under a thousand hectares, um, and they have an independent chair, uh, which is, uh, they elect me. Uh, and one of the important things was to avoid duplication in how we uh, ran the show uh, and uh, save money. So we appointed Forest Owners Association and their uh, staff uh, form the secretariat for the board and the various program committees, which you're going to hear more about this morning. We've had about five, or at the end of this year, we will have had five years of operation. And um, even though it's probably easier for us to say so, but we think uh, it has generally been a success. The collection has been smooth, the objections about having to pay uh, this extra money at the end of the harvesting process uh, has quietened down. Um, the uh, machinery works smoothly and the amount uh, collected uh, has been uh, increasing and is uh, a pretty substantial fund. Starting in 2014, when um, the whole thing came together, uh, up to the end of this year as projected, uh, the board will have received $42.6 million in levy funding. Uh, and it will run at about $10 million a year from here on at the rate of 27 cents per tonne. And that's based on volume, not price. So we are not dependent on the ups and downs of the market, although that has stabilised uh, pretty well in the last uh, year or so. As was expected when we designed the program, the largest expenditure uh, on forest grow has been on forest growing research, which is really what we're going to talk about today. By the end of this year, uh, spending will have been exactly one half of the amount collected. Um, there's a, the trend line is slightly down, but it, it reached just over 60%. Uh, and uh, over the entire period, uh, we've spent 21.3 million on research from uh, foresters. Uh, so that's... Um, uh, a pretty impressive contribution and uh, that is likely to continue because the, the ideas for expenditure, the demands uh, keep uh, changing and updating. One of the things we're very concerned about and we uh, are constantly reminded of this is that whatever we agree to spend the money on, it has to benefit all foresters. Uh, so it's not just a supplement for the large growers. Uh, it is, has to be a program that's going to benefit small growers, large growers, all growers. Um, and we're very, very conscious of that. The thing about commodity levies, the legislation says they shall last for six years uh, and then you have to go out for a new mandate. Um, so next year is the termination point uh, and we are preparing for a renewal of that mandate and considerable work has gone into that and you'll hear from Don, um, the communications officer from FOA, uh, about what's being done uh, and how we're going to uh, publicise that and, of course, encourage people to participate. Uh, there will be a vote in, uh, through March and actually concluding in April next year, uh, and we hope that will be successful. And we're promoting it through all the standard um, uh, opportunities we get, 
uh, there will be articles in the industry publications like the tree grower uh, and the bulletin. Uh, there will be some national advertising. And some of you might have caught the TV series which is uh, being run. Um, there's, uh, there will also be a series of seminars, uh, workshops, uh, which will be run around the country uh, and they will be uh, uh, starting in Masterton uh, on the last Monday of this month, then into Fielding and then around the country. Uh, and there will be uh, polling of the constituency as well um, to see what the thoughts are on the ground. We're very fortunate over the years to have assembled a mailing list and a contact list which is uh, used uh, for um, contact uh, and response. So that's uh, being used now and uh, FFA have been very uh, helpful in providing that information to us. Uh, so being able to contact forest growers direct uh, is very important. The board, as you would have heard from Phil, uh, has been thinking about some modifications uh, to the structure uh, and general proposals. So feedback from the industry is very much welcomed at this point as we finalise that design. So David's going to talk about that and um, We've got some ideas uh, about the constitutional structure, whether there should be a, a, another um, category, for instance, um, whether there should be uh, uh, an extension of the spending program. And let me use one example, which is highly relevant these days. Uh, that is money we've started to put into training and education the big call in forestry, just as it is in agriculture and in other industries, is getting labour, getting young people out of school uh, to decide on a forestry career. So we've put money into uh, scholarships at the top end of the scale, you might say, and also on-the-job training. Uh, there's a programme over in Gisborne which we, uh, in conjunction with Mr Jones and the government support, uh, are putting into uh, demonstrating on the job for school leavers what can uh, be what is available in the forestry industry. So we think this is a way of ensuring that forestry is seen as uh, positive and a good career, safe and rewarding. There's a lot of competition for those young people uh, and getting them into the industry is something we strongly support. And we're looking around for programs that will help boost the training opportunities for on the job and for educational institutions. You're going to hear about the main program of the levy funding uh, beyond the research. So members of the Levy Board um, are going to talk about other aspects of what we, uh, uh, what we support. But there are important things like biosecurity, health and safety, um, the training which I've just referred to, uh, and many other uh, activities, fire, transport, um, and uh, these are things that are very important to the forestry industry generally. We've got to generate uh, interest in the 2019 levy referendum. So when you go home, if you wouldn't mind remembering the dates and the program and talk amongst your colleagues and, and your contacts and tell them this is coming up, we want it to continue uh, we think we've proven the case and we especially want the smaller scale foresters uh, to be um, active and enthusiastic participants. Uh, 
I have to tell you that the qualification to vote hasn't changed. Uh, the constituency was uh, always, uh, from the original design, an owner of trees uh, or a licensee or grantee of trees um, over 10 years old in a contiguous block of at least four hectares. So that uh, hasn't changed. Um, an independent polling organisation will undertake the job, just as it did last time, and um, we're doing a preliminary survey through Colmar Brunton, uh, the respected uh, polling organisation, to get some feedback through that mailing list uh, that we've identified, and uh, that will also uh, help the Secretariat complete the um, format of the presentation. Uh, we're indebted to the enthusiasts in the NZFFA um, who are going around the country with us um, doing the workshops and uh, making sure that uh, questions are answered, that enthusiasm is generated um, and uh, there will be uh, considerable support for the advertisements and the general publicity. So we are saying as we do this and as we make our presentations that this is done for the benefit of the all forest growers and we like to present um, pictures of how that is done, uh, where that is done, um, so that uh, all forest growers are convinced that the 27 cents um, which they contribute per tonne uh, on their product uh, goes to a good cause. So thank you for that and I'm um, keen to hear what the uh, general uh, presentations are for the future. So uh, look forward to this being a successful two days plus the field trip on Thursday um, and uh, I think we'll all be stimulated hopefully by what um, nice timing uh, thanks uh, stimulated by uh, our participation and what we hear and we are certainly keen to answer any questions listen to any ideas um, and uh, sort of get enthusiastic about forestry thank you very much